Hey, you're the proud new owner of the AWS 2000 Advanced Wireless System from Sonal. Congratulations! Look, I wanted to drop confetti from the ceiling and pop champagne, but I can see that you're a professional. And time is of the essence. You're either on set or have an upcoming shoot, and you need to know how to get this system up and running ASAP. So we're going to move quickly, but you'll find timestamps in the description so you can jump ahead or revisit a section. And I think I can hear your AD shouting in the background, so let's get to work. First. We'll need to install AA batteries in both the transmitter and receiver. Then we'll turn on the units by holding the power buttons. When the system starts up, it will prompt you to designate the type of battery that you've installed. I'm using Watson MX Nickel Metal Hydride Rechargeables, so I'll use the arrow up-down buttons to scroll to NIMH and press set. If you're using alkaline or lithium, just adjust accordingly. You won't do any damage to the system by making the wrong selection, but your battery meter won't be accurate, and that's a recipe for disappointment. The micro USB port can be used to charge nickel metal hydride batteries without removing them from the compartments, and you can even power the units via USB when batteries aren't available. Next, we'll screw the antennas on the receiver and connect our microphone to the transmitter's input jack. I'm using a Sonal UTM86 lavalier. Now that we're powered up and connected, it's time to scan and sync. Just press and hold the AFS button on the receiver and give it a few seconds to find a frequency free of interference. Once you see sync, just align the infrared ports of the receiver and transmitter and voila, a check mark appears, letting you know the devices are successfully synced. Easy, right? But let's say you find yourself in an environment with lots of interference and you want control to dial in specific settings. No problem. Navigating the AWS 2000's menu is simple. Using combinations of the power, set, up and down buttons unlocks all of the functionality you need to make adjustments quickly and intuitively. We can manually select our channel or frequency. Let's manually select a frequency. Press and hold the set button to enter the menu mode. Use the up down buttons to scroll to tune and press the set button. Use the up down buttons to scroll to the frequency prompt and press the set button. Use the up-down buttons to manually tune the frequency. Press and hold to scroll rapidly through the available frequencies. Once you've selected the desired frequency, press set to store it. With sync on the screen, press the set button. The yes-no prompt will flash on the screen. Use the up-down buttons until yes flashes on the screen and press the set button. The sync indicator arrow will show on the screen. Make sure the transmitter and the receiver's IR ports are facing each other until sync with a check mark appears on the screen of the device that's initiating the sync. When syncing is complete, confirm that the receiver and transmitter are tuned to the same channel. Alternatively, let's select a channel. On the receiver, press and hold the set button to enter the menu. Use the up-down buttons to scroll to tune and press the set button. Use the up-down buttons to scroll to the channel prompt and press the set button. The group number will flash. Use the up-down buttons to select the group number and press the set button to store it. The channel number will flash. Scroll to the desired channel number and press set to store it. With sync on the screen, press the set button. Press the up-down buttons until yes flashes on the screen and press the set button. The sync indicator arrow will show on the screen. Make sure the transmitter and the receiver's IR ports are facing each other until sync with a check mark appears on the screen of the device that's initiating the sync. When syncing is complete, confirm that the receiver and transmitter are tuned to the same channel. So you've powered up, synced, and mic'd your talent. Now let's set levels. First, we'll set our input level on the transmitter. With the AWS 2000, you don't have to enter complex menus to perform basic functions. To adjust your input levels, simply press the arrow up down button. It's that easy. Now, let's say you want to switch between mic and line inputs. Press and hold the set button to activate menu mode. Use the up down buttons to scroll to the input menu and press the set button to enter the input preferences. The current input selection will blink. Use the up down buttons to select mic or line. For this example, let's assume our talent has been fitted with a lavalier microphone and choose mic. The input dB level will appear on the screen. Use the up down buttons to raise or lower the input level. Press the set button to store the change. After we've got a good input level on our talent or subject, we'll set our output level. From the receiver, we can control the main output or the headphone output. Let's start with the main output, which controls the signal level that is sent to the camera or recorder. Use the up-down buttons to adjust the output. The screen will read main, along with the output level from negative 29 dB to 8 dB. We want to deliver a high-level output without distorting. If the peak indicator flashes red, consider adjusting your levels. Press the set button to save the change. 
To adjust the headphone output, we'll use the receiver's toggle function. This lets you quickly, but temporarily, switch the control of the up-down buttons between main and headphone outputs. Double press the power button. Output phone will appear on the screen. Use the up-down buttons to adjust the headphone output. The screen will read phone out along with the output level. Press the set button to save the change. After approximately 7 seconds, the up-down buttons will return to controlling the main output. But let's say you don't want the temporary controls to default back to main output. Got you covered. We can engage toggle lock, which permanently changes the output level functions of the up-down buttons. To do this, press and hold the set button to enter menu mode. Scroll to advanced menu and press the set button. In the advanced menu, scroll to output and press the set button. The menu selection will blink. Use the up-down buttons to scroll to toggle lock and press the set button. When on the main screen, double press the power button to toggle between up-down button control of the main output or the headphone output. Okay, with our level set, let's make sure you're able to see the screen when it's tucked in your sound bag. To adjust brightness, press and hold the set button to enter menu mode. In the menu mode, scroll to brightness. Press set to enter the menu. The brightness level will blink. Use the up-down buttons to select the level. The character's brightness level will change as you scroll through the menu. Press the set button to save the change. The OLED technology makes it easy to see even in dim conditions, but in direct sunlight, shading the screen with your hand can help visibility. We've even seen sound mixers use gaff tape to flag off light from the screen, which allows them to reduce the brightness, thus extending battery life. In addition to the bright OLED screen, the RF indicator displays the status of the connection between the transmitter and receiver with solid red, no signal, solid blue, strong signal, or intermittent red and blue, weak signal. With your AWS 2000, you can also select between two power output levels. Low, 5 milliwatt, is ideal when the transmitter is relatively close, 150 feet or less, to the receiver. It also provides the transmitter with approximately 20% more battery runtime. High, 30 milliwatt, allows the microphone to cover a wider area and more range. This setting is recommended if your subject is moving around or is consistently more than 200 feet from the receiver. To change the transmitter's power output setting, press and hold the set button to enter menu mode. Scroll the power out and press the set button. The menu selection will blink. Use the up down buttons to select the power output and press the set button to save your selection. Okay, the last thing I want to cover before you head into the field is how to prevent accidental adjustments by locking your transmitter or receiver. Press and hold the set button to enter menu mode. Scroll to the lock menu and press the set button. The menu selection will blink. Select locked, on with level, or unlock and press the set button to store the change. Locked disables all of the buttons to prevent accidental changes to the settings. On with level locks all functions except the output level control. Use this setting for quick access to output level changes without changing any of the other settings. Unlock restores the functions of all the buttons. Lastly, when the transmitter or receiver is locked, you can still access menu mode by pressing and holding the set button. Okay, while that's enough to get you on your feet and running, make sure to read the user manual for detailed instructions on giving each unit custom names, accessing pilot tone, three level squelch, changing the display orientation, and much more. But by following the steps in this video, coupled with the easy to use menus, I think you're ready to roll sound. Thanks for watching. For more information, follow us at Sonal Sound and visit us online at sonalsound.com.